Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Old Glory Games podcast. This is episode 11. My name is Kyle, and I'm here with my partner, Greg. And we're here to talk about Bronnie James and just parents in general interfering with the kids' lives and living vicariously through it in some ways and just being jerks. That's my opinion, personally. Greg, what do you think? Well, I, I think... Well, really, the only reason why we're talking about Bronny is because LeBron is his dad. So I think everybody, or at least almost everybody, should know that one of LeBron's final wishes, I guess, as an NBA player is to play with his son in the NBA. And he's been saying that for the past few years. So the problem is, and I've... I've not watched a ton of Bronny. I've watched some highlights and some clips here and there. He's not good enough to play in the NBA. He just isn't. I've seen my share of NBA basketball over the decades I've been on this planet. I've seen my fair share of AAU basketball, college basketball, high school basketball, and I'm not saying uh, I'm at the level of an NBA scout, but I think I can recognize NBA talent when I see it. And I just don't see it in this kid. And it's not knocking them. I'm not the only one saying that. So I think I've seen some clips of him playing in high school and AAU. And, and let's be honest, when you have his level of talent, you're still going to be better than most of the guys you play in high school and, you know, maybe half the guys in AAU. But when you get to college, major college, everybody's good. The manager is good. I mean, they're all good players. So the gap between you and everybody else shrinks and disappears. And even in some cases, it goes in the other direction as far as a deficit is concerned. I feel like, and I, I, I'm not trying to sound mean, I'm, I'm being a realist. Bronny James, at best, from what I've seen, has maybe mid-major college basketball ability. There's nothing that stands out in his game that screams this is an NBA caliber player. He To me, he's just an okay player. Now, again, for him to be on a Division I roster, he's got to be good. And he's good, but he's not NBA good. And the pressure that his father is putting on him directly or indirectly is just absolutely not fair. It's not fair to him. He'll never live up to the standards that LeBron set with his play. And because um, that's on LeBron's wish list to play basketball with his son, now his son has to try to carry that weight, you know, in trying to meet that expectation. And it's like, from a talent perspective, He just can't do it. Now, can he get better? Absolutely he can. Can he work himself into being some sort of role player in the NBA? It's possible. But he would need to stay in college and develop his game. But if he's talking about going pro after this season, I mean, the kid doesn't start. His team is not very good. The Pac-12 is not very good. So you don't stand out on your team, a bad team. You don't stand out in a conference, a bad conference. And yet you're talking about, oh, well, I'm weighing my options to play in the NBA. LeBron is delusional when it comes to this. And now you've made uh, Bronny delusional, too, if he truly believes he's ready to play in the NBA. I have a couple of quotes attributed to LeBron about Bronny and his ability. And this goes back to the pressure this young man has to be under uh, from all the expectations. So LeBron 
said, and I think he he put it on Twitter, if I'm not mistaken. And it, apparently he was watching a uh, basketball on League Pass, and that's the package you can get where you can watch all the uh, out of yeah, market yeah. basketball games. So apparently he was watching that one night, and he says, "Man, Bronny definitely." Better than, and I'm reading this verbatim. So if the grammar is not 100%, <laughs> I, 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 I'm quoting here. So forgive me. Man, Bronny, definitely better than some of these cats I've been watching on League Pass today. Expletive, lightweight, hilarious. And he's That's terrible. Yeah. And he's also attributed to saying he could play for us right now. Easy. So. Not only, so, yeah. Not only are you putting a ton of pressure on your son, you are also disrespecting every basketball player in the NBA right now. If you're saying your son can come in, and just to read some of Bronny's stats, and I'm not knocking him or making fun of him, these are facts. He averages 4.8 points a game. His field goal percentage is 37.1. Three-point percentage, 27.8. Free throw percentage, and he's a guard, 62.1%. Rebounds per game, 2.8. Assists, 2.3. Steals, 0.7. Blocks, 0.2. Those aren't NBA caliber numbers. They just aren't. No. So, you know, LeBron is putting all of this undue pressure and expectations on his son. And... I think it was ESPN or, or, or some sports outlet that previously had Bronny uh, projected in their mock draft. I think he went from being top 10 to second round to not at all. You know, wait till the following NBA season because they're not seeing him being on the radar at all. And I think that is justifiable. So... LeBron apparently had an issue with that. And I quote, can y'all please just let the kid be a kid and enjoy college basketball? Uh, James tweeted on Monday, uh, the not this past Monday, but you know, whenever it was uh, said, the worst results will ultimately do the talking no matter what he decides to do. If y'all don't know, he doesn't care what a mock draft says. He just works earned, not given. And to all the other kids out there striving to be great, just keep your head down. Blinders on and keep grinding, he continued in a second tweet. These mock drafts doesn't matter one bit. I promise you, only the work matters. Let's talk real basketball, people. Well, LeBron, you started it, okay? You started it with all this talk about how great your son is and how he can play in the league right now. So now when you have professional analysts taking a realistic look at your son's ability you take offense to that and you're blaming them and you're not taking any responsibility for uh all of this pressure you're putting on him it reminds me of lavar ball who oh my gosh yes who is an absolute clown right yeah um, but if you want a hype man He's your guy. <laughs> He's your guy. Hundred <laughs> percent. If you need a hype man, get Lavar Ball. But the way he went about promoting his sons was just out of bounds, over the top, unrealistic. Now, Lamelo is a good player. He really is. He's heard plays for the Hornets, so he wasn't wrong about him. But his other two sons, I don't know about. But basically, I just brought him up. There he is. Yes. I just brought him up to just make a point about uh, these unrealistic expectations uh, of these young uh, athletes and basketball players. I, you know, you know, you're a parent. I'm a parent. As parents, do we have sometimes have unrealistic expectations of our kids when it comes to sports? I mean, you know, when when my son started playing. Uh, playing sports. I mean, not long after he could walk good, right? He was bouncing the basketball. He was doing this and doing that. Of course, you know, Mama's like, that's really impressive. You know, maybe he'll be able to play, you know, pro ball or do something like that one day. We all have those thoughts. But, you know, as our kids get older, 
um, you know, and, and they're successful on, on certain levels and we're proud of them and, and all of those things. Um, at some point it, it, it gets down to um, ability. It gets down to measurables because, you know, if you're, if you have brawny skill set and you're seven feet tall, you're going to have a much better chance of making it to the pros than if you're Bronny's height and six four and have his skill set. So, uh, as parents, do we have unreasonable expectations of our children sometimes as far as what they can do and how far they can go in sports? We all do. We all do because to us, um, our kids are the greatest athletes in the world. And I still think that about my three kids who, you know, uh, thankfully uh, were all college athletes and I'm their biggest fans. But, you know, I'm not going to go around and say, oh, well, you know, my son could, could play, uh, you know, major league soccer right now. Or, you know, uh, my oldest daughter, yeah, she could run track for, uh, you know, the U.S. Olympic team or just whatever it is. I'm not going to go out and put that kind of pressure on them. I'm going to be thankful for what they achieved and still major achievement because in our last episode, we looked at the numbers as far as how few high school athletes go on to play college ball and then go on to play in the pros. So I'm super proud, gushing with pride over all three of my children what they've accomplished in college athletics but at the same time I'm not going to put that kind of pressure on them to do any more than what they want to do because it, let's ask this pose this question does Bronny really want to play in the NBA has anybody asked that I mean, what does he want to do? Everybody asks, well, what does LeBron want? Well, what does Bronny want in this particular situation? Again, I, I go back to uh, being a parent because that's how I relate to this. You know, would I want my kids to play pro ball? Absolutely. That'd be fantastic. But at that point, is it more me living vicariously through my kids? Or is it more about what my kids want? At some point... It's the former and not the latter, and I think that's what it is with LeBron and Brownie. And he's telling us to let him be a kid and just enjoy the game. He's the one that really needs to take his own advice when it comes to that. He's under enough pressure just being your son, LeBron. I mean, just let him, even if he doesn't make it to the NBA, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, he won't be broke. Yeah, he won't be broke. In fact, um, you said a lot there, a lot, a lot there that uh, I can definitely unpack. Um, I'm gonna go back to what you talked talk about managers being able to play basketball on these college teams. Well, my brother-in-law is a, is a coach at Youngstown. He's on staff, and um, you want to take him on a one-on-one basketball? Good luck. He will, he will tear you up. He will tear you up. You know, um, he's not even that tall. He just can shoot the lights out the gym. Uh, he played high school and everything else. A good athlete, but he he could never he could never make NBA. He he, he would tell you that. And he would never make he would never make college really for that matter. But he can play basketball. And that stat we put on the, that's on the screen right there. This is from 2006 in terms of the uh, numbers, but it's just it hasn't changed much. Only one in sixteen thousand high school students go to go to pros. But if you go to men's basketball, it's even more um, more difficult. So from high school to college is two point nine percent. To get you know, percentage wise to get to from high school to college, which is pretty low, but it's kind of high in some ways because three percent, you know, that's still pretty low. But you go from college to pro, it's one point three percent, and then from high school to pro, it's astronomically low. It's, it's pretty much zero. It's point zero three percent. So, and so and my, my point of saying that is, we mentioned this in our last podcast. That's pretty arrogant for LeBron to say that. He's he's really insulting. The other ninety nine point nine zero seven percent of of kids who who aspire to do who can't because they don't have the ability or they don't have the father to even push them that way. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned um, his stats four point eight. Uh, I get the thing is at four point eight points a game. 
windows have to be high. Dennis Rodman, he wasn't an NBA a prospect, but he grew like almost a foot over the summer. And he his rebounding numbers were really good. He just had a good defense prowess. Like you said, if you have a good skill, you can do it. But in looking here, there's nothing in here that, that sparks anything that will let anyone think that they could possibly get this guy. It, look, Muggsy Bogues, or he was five, five, whatever. Five, three. He, he, yes, and, but he was fast and he could steal. He would steal the ball. He, he, had, he, he had a ton of steals, double digits of steals, because he had a skill set. You give him the ball, Muggsy Bogues, he would not turn the ball over. You can double team and triple team. He, 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 he's not, he's not, you're not getting the ball away from him. So his turnover rate is really, really low, and he gets, uh, he, and he gets steals. So he had a, a really, really good, um, in the right system, he was effective and played a long time. So so nothing in here screams that at all for the for uh, for Bronny. And the fact that ESPN, the shill who love LeBron, the fact that they didn't push him, that had to hurt. Mm-hmm. It had to hurt. Um, and, and so lastly, I'll say this now that you uh, – well, I'll keep going here. I, I just recap what you said. Basically, from a timeline standpoint, we talked about the he talked about LeBron. Oh, he could play now. He could play now. Oh, oh, oh. And then you have the uh, the ESPN who normally shill for LeBron said, "Uh, no, he's not quite ready. We're not going to put him in our in our in our in our uh, mock drafts." Then LeBron says, "Leave him alone, fellows. Come on, I mean, let them let them do the work. Let them do the work. Come on, guys." And like you said, um, Greg, I mean, he did that. It's LeBron so dense. He doesn't understand his own actions and replications. I mean, rep- repercussions from his actions. And like you said, does Bronny even want to play? Um, and so that leads into parent, parent expectations, which we can talk about a little bit later in terms of every parent wants their kid to go pro. I know I coached um, many, many different sports. And you always had that one or two parents a season who wants their kid to be the, the quarterback or wants to get him to get the ball or, or her to get the ball all the time because if – if they're 12 years old, don't get the balls, then they're not going to have any scouts, and my entire career is done at 12 years old. These parents think that sometimes. Mm-hmm. And lastly, and lastly, I'll say this. It reminds me of the movie a little bit of, which is a fantastic film. I would love to do a video just on this. It's a true story, essentially. Uh, the film is called Searching for Bobby Fisher, about a kid, Josh Waitskin. It's a great story about a dad who wants his kid to be the next Bobby Fisher. Then you have this other teacher who who is a classically trained teacher who wants to get him there. Then you have this street guy, uh, Lawrence Fishburne, who wants him to play loose and have fun and be able to uh, play fast, fast speed chess um, in the park of um, New York. But his mom doesn't like him because well, his mom's questionable about that because she she doesn't want him to be you know have the bad personality. So mom wants him to be a a, a kid who can fish and hunt and um and play soccer and whatever and have a life. His dad wants him to be something else, but could possibly make him a total um weirdo and not like you know normal because Bobby Fisher lived a horrible life outside of chess. And so it's this duality, how you mesh it all together and the way they pull it together, it's a beautiful story of this kid who, who basically was able to do both. Um, and that's what you want to see with these kids. Be able to be hard-nosed and, and, and have a good uh, aspect in terms of your sport and your craft and be able to take it somewhere but at the same time, not have it dominate your life so much that you don't have a life that you can be a good person that you can go hunting with your dad or fishing with your dad or um, play another sport and be a balanced person and that's why I think people miss a lot about this kind of stuff because ultimately he did both he became a world chess player and became a black belt in taekwondo other things too he was, he was able to do Josh Wishkin he's still around um, and so that's the, the picture that we should be taking these kids towards but I don't think our society allows us to do that. No, and 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 I agree. And you know, parental expectations—they're heavy. They're heavier than the expectations of a coach or a buddy or your peers or anything. They're your parents. So <laughs> if you're that guy at little league games that are, you know, screaming at your kid because they can't hit a curveball or they drop a fly ball or just whatever. Right. Like, come on, man. You know, your kid's not going to be in the major leagues. You know, they're just not. You know, just sit back and enjoy it. Enjoy this time because you only have them for a short period of time and then they're gone. You know, they're, they've are they grown up and they're 
they've gone on to do their own thing. It's hard, especially if you're a former athlete and really competitive. It's it's hard to just sit there and not try to coach from the stands. But think about what you're doing, you know, to your children when you do that. I'll tell you a quick story. So some years ago when we were in Utah and my son was playing, I think, like rec ball, I think at the time rec basketball, and I was sitting in the stands and this guy, I don't know if he got tanked up before the game or what. I mean, he was yelling, 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 yelling at the ref. And, and you know, as, as a coach and, and as a fan, I've done my share of yelling at the refs. But he was getting personal yelling at the refs about this and that. And that was a bad call. And just and his son was just so embarrassed, like he just wanted to roll up in a ball and hide. So his wife is trying to shush him, just, shush, you know, just and he he was having none of it. He was just going to keep on yelling at the ref and yelling about the game and nobody was going to stop him. So the ref goes, look, I've had enough. If you don't be quiet, I'm throwing you out. Oh, you can't throw me out. Da, 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 da. The ref threw him out, threw him out because he was acting like such a jerk at a wreck basketball game. <laughs> wreck basketball. <laughs> Serious. Threw him out, so he didn't leave the building. You could see him peeking through the window in the door of of the gym, right? You wouldn't mean, <laughs> right? But just so embarrassing. His son turned beet red, and it's like you don't you don't want to be that guy. Let these kids enjoy being kids. Let let these kids enjoy the love of whatever game they're playing, and. If they wind up being a professional athlete, fantastic. But if they don't, so what? You know, that doesn't define them as a person. And you should not love them any less because they didn't make the pros like you wanted them to again. It, it When parents do that, it's more about what they want than what the kids want. Because at some point, even if you are a phenom when you're younger... Sometimes these kids just burn out and they don't want to do it anymore and their heart's not in it and they're not happy. And, you know, we want our kids to be well adjusted and happy with what they're doing. And we don't want to impose things on them that make them unhappy, well, especially when it comes to sports. It's like there are more important things in life than sports. And we're talking sports. So it's like, well, what are you talking about? That's exactly what I mean. Sports is a big part of life. It's not life. It just isn't. There are other aspects of life that are more important. So when we talk about Bronny, all of these things come rushing to mind for me as a parent. Now, I don't have the platform LeBron has. You don't have the platform LeBron has. So if you and I are just you know, sitting in the barbershop and you know how a barbershop talk goes. It's, you know, it's a bunch of hyperbolic stuff just going back and forth just between us guys. Right. Oh yeah. My, my son, you know, he, uh, he's going to play in the NBA and he's good enough to, you know, to beat Michael Jordan one-on-one right now or just whatever it is. That's one thing. (laughs) Right. But to get on a worldwide platform, yeah. like Twitter or whatever it is, and you're in the league and you're telling everybody across the world and all the other players in the league, guess what? My son, who's 19 years old and, d- and doesn't even average five points a game in college and comes off the bench and really hasn't done anything distinguishable in his career, he's better than you right now. And... Yeah. Another thing that LeBron's probably not thinking of, well, I don't think he's thinking at all when he says these things. (laughs) Nope. You're putting a target on your son's back. Let's say he gets to the NBA. Every every role player, every 11th and 12th man, every guy like that is going to be gunning for your son because of your big mouth. Oh, you think your son's better than me? Let me show it to you. That reminds me of, oh, this was a few years ago. And I want to say it was, it might have been Patrick Beverly. There was a rookie that came out 
with all kinds of fanfare and accolades. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to shut you down, young fella. And he did. Now, how often do you see nowadays NBA players pick up full court and harass somebody that's bringing up the ball? Never. <laughs> you don't ever see it. Unless, unless it's personal. Yeah. <laughs> or, or unless the game's on the line and you got to get the ball back. Sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, I think it was yep. Patrick Beverly or somebody like that. He was like a defensive specialist. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to shut you down. And I'm going to harass you to no end. And I'm going to show you that you're not as good as you think you are. And you're not as good as what all these pundits think you are. I mean, he was in his jersey all night. I think he only scored like two or four points. But he did it to prove a point. And that's what guys will be doing to Bronny if he gets to the league. And For sure. again, why would you want to put that on him? Now, I'm going to ask you this. You and I talked about this previously. We haven't gotten into Bronny's health issues yet. Oh, that's a good point. Yep. But what are your thoughts on his... I guess, lack of putting up big time numbers. How much of that do you attribute to his maybe uh, hesitance to go all out because of, you know, his heart condition? That would be the first thing I would think about. But to be fair, I would have to see his numbers prior to. Mm -hmm. But everything being equal, if, if LeBron made that tweet prior to, his condition right now that happened on July 24th, 2023 at 9.26 a.m. Uh, uh, Pacific Standard Time. Uh, Bronny collapsed at the Galen Center during a USC practice session. It was later revealed that he suffered a cardiac arrest, which is super duper scary, um, caused by congenital heart failure and it's heart, def- heart defect, which by the way, which by the way, Greg, the last podcast, which should already be up by now, was on Pete Maravich, mm-hmm. Pistol Pete, and he died from that, a, 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 a congenital heart defect. Now, I'm not trying to compare, parallel the two, but it's kind of strange that we just picked these two people one to one. This was not by chance. We were going to do another uh, topic. We just picked this out of a hat right now. So back to back, we're talking about this. But he was released from the hospital roughly three days later. Less than uh, five months removed from his cardiac arrest, James made his collegiate uh, debut with the Trojans. Um, and so, yeah, put it, put it this way, Greg, any person in the world would always be hesitant to go all out if that was over your over your head, especially if you feel people around you that are pushing you to do it because of your dad being who he is and doing it. So if he was just like a player, like in the documentary Hoop Dreams, it came, a document came out in 1992, I believe. Where it was, a, they followed these two players, high school players, literally like seven years, and you see all the things they have to go through, or whatever, and the pressures, or whatever. But they were all pressures put on themselves by themselves. Bronny has all that plus the honor of a dad who happens to have 159 million followers on Twitter and everything else. So. If he feels that pressure on him and he feels that dad wants him to go to the pros and all this, but he somehow has this cardiac arrest and I don't know how serious it was, but it doesn't sound like it was, doesn't sound like it was um, a minor thing. He was in the hospital for three days. Um, I would think that he would be hesitant. No person would be like, yeah, I'm going to go all out now. I'm going I'm to I'm work even harder. I don't know. It feels like to me, like if I feel like my dad's pressuring me, then if I'm going to be pushed on the court, I'm not going to be, my heart's not going to be in it. Um, and so I'm going to throw it back to you, Greg, but I'm going to throw it back to you with the context of his latest statement saying that he's going to find out what the interest is with NBA teams before he says what he's going to do in terms of going for the uh, NBA draft. It sounds like LeBron told him what to say, doesn't it? I mean, it it doesn't really feel... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel like it's coming from him. Now, I, I don't know the young man, so I can't say for sure. But it just sounds more like the PR machine and a publicity machine LeBron has going. Why, on top of all the other things, all the delusional things that have been said previously, 
why would Bronny go out and say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to weigh my options. It's not like you're a top player in college football college football, right. college basketball, you're just not. So how delusional and arrogant can you be to come out and make that type of statement like all of these NBA teams are beating down your door for a chance to pick you? I think this is, it just sounds like he just felt pressured to say that to please LeBron or who knows LeBron may have told him to say it. I don't know. But it's a very bad look. And if the young man said that on his own, he's just putting more undue pressure on himself. And he just doesn't need to do that. We can look at other players, athletes that are children of legendary all-time great athletes. And the one that comes to mind is Michael Jordan and Jeffrey Jordan. Now, Jeffrey Jordan, if I recall correctly, he was like 6'1", 180, or 6'2", or something like that. Did not at all have the measurables that his dad had from a physical perspective and a talent perspective. I think he bounced around a couple of colleges. His career was not anything to write home about. Now, just the pressure of being Michael Jordan's son that was enough. That was more than enough. But you didn't see Michael Jordan going around and say, oh, well, Jeffrey could play for the Bulls right now. I think even if it, even if in his gut he thought that, there's no way he'd come out and say that. It's hard living up to the expectations of your father or your mother when they are all-time greats in whatever field or sport, you know, Think about, you know, Scottie Pippen Jr. I mean, I think he's on the Lakers roster, but you don't really hear a whole lot about him. And, you know, there are other ones out there. Now, there are cases, and Steph Curry comes to mind, where you get to the league and you're actually better than your father. There's there's Jeffrey. But in other cases, you know, for every Steph Curry, there's a whole bunch of Scooter Berries and Jeffrey Jordans and Scotty Pippen uh, Juniors and the like. You know, they, you know, Tim Hardaway Jr., although he's a solid player, not taking anything away from him, but he's not Tim Hardaway Sr. And we can go on and on with the examples. But I, I think that at some level, and my wife asked me, well, what does LeBron's wife think about all that? That's an interesting question. Wow. Good. Yeah. Very interesting question. And, and kudos to her for, for posing that question. What, I, you know, it would be interesting to know how she felt about it. It's like, well, LeBron, why are you doing this to him? Just, you know, she's probably telling LeBron, you know, just let him be. But it's all part of a gigantic machine. And I... I think LeBron is is setting Bronny up for failure. I really do. And, it, and it's a shame because he doesn't have to try to be LeBron. He doesn't, I mean, he doesn't even have to play pro ball. I mean, no. he, he can go on to be a success in something else if he wants to. And should be in everybody's eyes just as successful as if he made it to the NBA. But unfortunately, you know, in our society, so much weight is put on these young kids, you know, being a pro basketball player, a pro football player, or a rapper, or just whatever it is, and they just might not be cut out for that. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I wasn't cut out to play in the NFL. I just wasn't. I just wasn't big enough, fast enough, or whatever. I was blessed to play semi-pro ball and, and some of the best five years of my life. But I knew my limitations. I knew I wasn't going to go play for the Panthers or anything else like that. I was just so thankful to be able to play, you know, beyond high school, you know, the game that I love to play. So I'm super proud of what I did play semi-pro ball. That was fine with me. And, you know, my family and, and friends, you know, they're just as proud of me as they would have been if I played 
uh, in the NFL. So that's the way it should be with this young man. Support him in whatever path he goes down professionally. If it's not the NBA, you know, maybe he can be a coach or, you know, maybe he can play the G League or maybe he can go overseas and play or maybe he can just be a quote unquote regular person and get a nine to five job somewhere. You know, that that should be perfectly fine. But as you and I both know, in some circles, that's not good enough, unfortunately. And I think in LeBron's eyes, it's probably not good enough either. And therein lies even more undue uh, pressure on this young man. So, you know, I feel bad for him because he's in a no win situation. No win situation. He just is. And, you know, I wanted to be as unbiased and impartial as possible. So, I, you know, like I said, I looked at a couple of clips of him playing. And it, <laughs> I mean, and, I, and, and I'm trying to be kind, but be honest at the same time. I just do not see a major college basketball skill set. I just don't see it. I really don't. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. I think if he played Division Two basketball, he would probably thrive at that level. And there's nothing wrong with that. There are plenty of guys that played D2 that were able to uh, break through and, and, and play at the next level. So in, if, if it were me, and you know this is very hypothetical, I would say, you know what, if your goal is to play in the NBA, you need to play someplace where, one, you get a chance to play, and two, where you get a chance to shine. Now, USC, I don't see him shining there. But if he went to a mid-major school or a Division II powerhouse or something like that, where he may shine a bit brighter, you may not be on TV a lot, but if you're yeah. good, the scouts will find you. And there would be a they lot of pressure. Yeah, there would be a lot less pressure there. And I think he would have room to grow and be comfortable. But this kid has been in the hot spotlight, you know, ever since, you know, what, eight, nine years old or however long it's been since we figured out, well, yeah, LeBron's kid can play a little basketball too. You know, it, it, I, I think, uh, you know, on many levels, we and I and not you and me, but just in general, you know, we need to ease up on him. But LeBron is the ringleader. If LeBron would just be quiet and yeah. stop saying all these ridiculous things, I think the rest of it would die down too. And we could just leave Bronny alone and let him enjoy the college experience, uh, the experience of being a college athlete. And if the NBA is a result, fine. If it's not a result, also fine. Yeah, let him get a career. I mean, maybe let him get a degree. And, yeah, and uh, go, uh, that's one thing. Is, it, there's one thing he could hold over his dad's head. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's one thing he, he could beat him in is 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 getting a college degree. And to me, that that and you made a very good point. Lost in all this. And it's not just Bronny. It's 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 a lot of these kids that basically just use college as a springboard to play pro ball and not take advantage of of getting a degree. Because guess what? As we talked about in one of our previous episodes, even if you make it to the NBA, what you know? What's the average uh, career duration for an NBA player? What three or four years? I mean, you know, it's not long. It's not long. So no, no. You know, why not take advantage of your opportunities to get a degree so when you're not playing basketball, you can go on and do something else. So that that there's another aspect there. Very well said. I think we covered this pretty well. Um, when I uh, fact check myself, um, that Hoop Dreams movie came out in 1994, not 92. So, mm -hmm. but it's a fantastic film. It came out the same year as Forrest Gump and those guys. A fantastic movie year, by the way. Um, but but in that in that movie, it, it dealt with these two players. And the point is, 
it shows you how difficult it is for these kids to go pro. I'm not even pro, but even the next level. And um, the obstacles are varying. It's a really interesting film. It's one of the best documentaries of all time. I recommend you watching it. So, but it just kind of wraps this whole thing up. And to me, again, I go back to what I said before about LeBron disrespecting everyone who didn't make it, who are just as talented as Bronny, and if not more, but couldn't make it to the NBA. And so I think it's just him being a knucklehead in this in the speech and not thinking and having the wrong mindset and goals and just all of that stuff that we're putting on him, but he's he's putting out there to his 150 million subscribers on Twitter. So, Greg, I'll let you finish this out and wrap this up and uh, take us home. Sure. So, uh, Thank you for for that point and, and that example. That's something that I'll need to check out. And I, I think that would be um, a good way to kind of summarize what we've talked about here this evening. So, um, again, going back to, to being a parent of athletes, your children, um, you know, if you're blessed enough to have them for 18 summers, more or less, as far as, you know, when they're with you and you watch them grow and mature from a sports perspective um, and just a life perspective in general, it is such a joy to watch uh, my kids grow up and play their various sports. They played, you know, multiple sports and very active and We've worn out like three vehicles going from town to town and state to state watching them. I cannot explain the joy and the pride that I feel in watching all three uh, do what they did for so long. It was just, you know, our vacation calendar revolved around their various athletic schedules. I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't change any of that which we experience with our children. I wouldn't trade it for all the money in the world. It's something that that is just special and meaningful. And that kind of time that you spend with your children playing sports or just whatever the activity is, watching them grow, mature, and watching their character fill out and all of those sorts of things, all of the life lessons that they learn and you know what they learn about leadership and and fair play and sportsmanship and all of those things that you can take with you beyond sports uh it's an experience that has just been an absolute joy and i'm so very thankful and so very blessed to have been able to to be a sports parent and if you know the people that are listening to us if that's something you can experience with your kids or something similar, I would highly recommend it. Um, highly recommend it. And you know, don't go into it pushing them and and saying, "Oh, yeah, Johnny's going to be the next Bob Gibson, or or Johnny's going to be the next, <laughs> <laughs> right. the next Bob Lanier, or just whatever it sure. is." Just relax and let Johnny be Johnny. And I trust you. You will have some of the best times of your lives and that those will be experiences that will just be you know golden and just uh, just valuable for them and for you sit back and enjoy the ride because the ride in a grant in the grand scheme of things only lasts so long and when it's over it's over I know you know when my kids stop you know playing their various sports after their college careers were over I was really bummed out, man. I was, I was very sad. It's like, wow, it's over. What am I going to do with myself? And, but you know, to them, they were happy and I'm sure at some level relieved. I mean, think about it. You know, they've been doing this ever since they were like, what, five, six years old and all the practices and all the long hours and all of the training and all of the running, you know, they achieved uh, a goal that, not too many people walking around achieve and to be so proud of them for doing that and them being proud of themselves. And it's like, you know what? I'm good. I had a good run. It's over. I'm proud of it. I look back on it with fond memories. Now it's time to turn to the next chapter of the book. And I think as parents, we need to 
Um, respect that, honor that, appreciate that, support them in the next phase of their lives and cheer for them just as hard as you did when they were playing whatever sport they were playing. So that's my take on that. And and again, if if your kids are in that position where they're playing Little League or Colt League or Rec Ball or AU or whatever it is, take a second, soak it all in and cherish that because you know what? In the blink of an eye, in a snap of a finger, it'll all be over. And if you are making them miserable by putting undue expectations on them, you're not going to get out of it what th- what you would get out of it or what they should get out of it. It's not about you. And we all like living vicariously through our kids, but it's about them and what's best for them and what they want to do in life. They may not want to play pro sports. They may want to do something else. And that's perfectly fine. Support them in that endeavor and just enjoy the ride. Because like I said, the ride is over much too quickly. And then when it's over, it's like, okay, what now? So enjoy it while you can. Well said, Greg. That's um, very, very well said. I can't say anything else to that. Um, everybody, if you enjoy what we do here on the Conservative Take podcast, um, comment below and let us know there. Also, I'm looking to do, I actually, I haven't told you this shit, Greg, but I want to tell you now in front of everybody. Surprise. Uh, I'd like yeah. to do. Yeah, I like to do a show at some time in the future where we answer your questions. So if you want to uh, ask us something, why don't you email us at uh, podcast at the dot com. That's podcast at the dot com, and we'll collect those questions. And when we get enough to form a show, we'll we'll get together and we'll do that. Does that sound like a plan, Greg? Is something you want to you like to do? I love that idea. I was actually thinking about that the other day. How neat it would be to um, field questions from our listeners and take a swing at answering. I mean, it may be something outside of our comfort zone, but I don't mind, you know, ask, uh, whatever. And, um, you know, we'll talk about it and, and hopefully that's enjoyable. I think that would be enjoyable for us to have an opportunity to answer questions from, uh, our listeners. So yeah, I'm all for it. Sounds like well, we could or what we could do is if the questions come in, if we're doing a show on topic A and we get a question on topic A, we just throw that question in along with that particular show. So yeah. whether we do all questions in one episode or we just answer them. Like, for instance, if there was a question today about parenting, we, we would, I'd say it right now, but we don't have any. So <laughs> unfortunately, we don't have <laughs> Well, I think we'll get some, right? <laughs> we have to go get some. So um, that's, that's kind of the thought there. Um, that being said, guys, um, thank you so much. We are on Spotify. We're on Apple podcast we're on google podcast we're visually video format on youtube and we're on other uh rss feeds that are out there that i didn't set up we're also going to try and get on to iheart radio as well and other ones but in the meantime guys just uh keep supporting us pray for us and uh, we will see you guys in the next one all right thank you so much